We lost. We freaking lost. Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley, starting a business, building a brand vlog. This one, big number, 186. So buckle up and get ready because I got some big news. 40,000, over 40,000 subscribers here on the T. Shanley, starting a business, building a brand vlog which is awesome. I uh, just want to give a big T. Hanley knuckle bump to you guys out there that are subscribers to this vlog. It feels so good, and I gotta, I gotta be honest, it feels more amazing to have like 40,000 subscribers or to reach that 40,000 mark on this channel than my Alpha M channel reaching like 5 million. Um, because this vlog, it's special, it's different, it's not like the other Alpha M channel. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the Alpha M YouTube channel, it's, it's my baby, it's what I do. But this vlog is different, right? It's, it's special and it's, it's just, it feels good. And I love being able to just kind of come on here, talk to you guys about business, because at the end of the, as you can see, you got, I gotta stop saying that damn word. Um, it's about entrepreneurship, and I am an entrepreneur from the bottom of my toes to the top of my, my luscious locks of flowing amazing hair. <laughs> So, um, I'm an entrepreneur, that's what I've always been, that's what gets me up in the morning, it's what excites me, and I know that if you are on an entrepreneurial journey, these vlogs are definitely going to add some value. Are they going to solve all your problems? Absolutely not, but are they gonna help you sort of avoid some of the potential speed bumps that you know I have struggled with or hit or T. Shanley has hit, and so I just really feel like it's a great place to just have a conversation and to talk to you guys about something that is in my blood, it's in my DNA, and if it's in yours in terms of entrepreneurship, it's an amazing ride, but it's not easy. It's very difficult, it's challenging, and at times it will make you cry. But the upside is so sweet, it's, it's worth the fright, it's worth the struggle, it's worth every ounce of blood, sweat, and tears that you have to put into it. Speaking of tears, I think we all here would cry a little bit when we found out at T. Shanley that we did not win the men's subscription box of the year at the subscription summit. <laughs> so we didn't win. I, I, I like to think that the, 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 the ballots were rigged because, come on, if they really knew what we got going on here, they would be like, yo, T. Shanley, best men's skincare, so mess, mess, best men's box in the history of boxes. So we were up against like four or five other like men's subscription box services. And apparently, Battle Box had an advantage. It rubbed a little T.J. Hanley on its subscription and won the damn award. But I, I would like a recount personally because I don't see how. And I would like to also know who was voting on this because it definitely wasn't you or me or anyone I know because <laughs> whatever. T.J. Hanley crushing it. So T.J. Hanley, the team T.J. Hanley, a lot of the team members, it was actually Kelly Robb, Akin Dave, Cindy, Josh Wu, and Lauren all went to what is called the subscription summit where it's a group of businesses that are all in the subscription box service and they hang out there are keynotes there are panels there are discussions there are just it's a place it, it's it's honestly it's awesome it's it's a place for people that are doing this which is a subscription box it's a place for them to connect talk about best practices what's working what's not working and just to sort of share um, the subscription world is hard. It's a very hard road. Now, there's incredible upside. If you can develop a subscription base, you know, it's incredible because each month you know that you have reoccurring revenue. And then as you add, it grows. Your base grows and so it's not like you're starting from zero every month. If you're selling glasses, right, that's not on a subscription, you start, you know, this month and, and you sell, say, 100 pairs of glasses. Next month, you gotta sell another 100 pair of glasses. You're starting from zero. But with a subscription service, you sell 100 glasses, next month you're starting with 100 and you're adding to that. Not to mention, you know, churn and people dropping off, but you get the general idea. Anyway, there's a subscription summit, and this year I think there were like 1,200 people that attended. I know that I think Rob and Kelly, or maybe it was just Rob, went to the first year. The, the, the conference has only been around maybe like three or four years. I happen to know the two people that started it. They are, are two dudes who have a subscription box for men that I've actually promoted, 
in the past and they started this and it's grown and it's really amazing. It's also grown in the sense that we brought more people this year. Last year it was just Rob, Kelly, and the Kim that went. This year, you know, about what, five people went. Um, we also had two people speak on panels. T. Shanley had two people on panels, which I think is, is awesome. The fact that we were invited or you know, got included in these panel discussions. Cindy was on one and Rob was on another. And apparently the panels were received incredibly well and both people, Rob and Cindy, knocked it out of the proverbial park. It's just awesome that we were included and that we're sort of part of this community because the Subscription Box Summit is sort of like a small little community. It's, it's like StyleCon or Menfluential Conference, just on a bigger scale. It's actually grown a lot faster than our conference has. But it's all based in solely focused on the subscription box model and and that's really cool. A lot of really smart people, a lot of very big brands and businesses that were there and so you can really get a lot of amazing information, a lot of just things to do and things to try and I know that for a fact that Tish Hanley came away from that meeting or that, that conference with a ton of things that we're going to try, things that we're going to implement and just good ideas because it's really challenging to grow and continue to grow and scale a subscription business. There are a lot of pieces in play. There are a lot of things you need to figure out. There are a lot of things that you need to really just, just nail down. And once you think you figured it out and everything's great, things change and you gotta figure it out again. Enough about T. Shanley, enough about subscription businesses because I'm sure that the majority of you are not going to be in the subscription business. But speaking of business, we did have some amazing business questions that I'd like to dive into now. King RBN has a business question. He says, knowing when to give up, move on from a business venture. When do you know it's time to give up on a business um, and to move on to something new? This is the million dollar question. It is really hard for me to sit here and tell you when to do that. I know that it's, it's tough, right? Because emotionally you think if I just stick it out a little longer, there's gonna be something that, that, that turns around. I think for me, because I've had multiple businesses fail, I think for me, it wasn't fun anymore and I just really didn't see the progress. Because even when things are tough, even when things are challenging in your business, even if you're not killing it, even if it's not growing at the speed at which you think it would or should, because that's the thing. We all think that our business, when we come up with an idea and we start it, we all think it's a home run. We're gonna be rich, we're gonna be famous, it's gonna work. But the reality a lot of times, once you start to get in there and you start doing your thing, it's different than that and it's hard. And a lot of times the success that, that we envision for ourselves doesn't happen or it doesn't happen as fast. A lot of times it boils down to you figuring out a better way to do something. Or you know, maybe you, you need to try something different or tweak something, but there are times when you try a business and it is time to stop because the business is bleeding you dry and it is just, it's not fun anymore. And so, you know, for me, my, my fitness center, there were a lot of red flags. There were a lot of red flags leading up, but we gave it everything that we had. And for me, the, the reason why I knew it was time to quit and give up was because I was filing bankruptcy. I had like half a million dollars of personal debt because now technically it was, it was the business debt, but because I am getting a loan from a bank or wherever I'm, I'm getting a loan from, it was in my name. I was a co-signer because a business or a bank isn't going to give you, you know, a hundred thousand dollars just because you've got a business like they're not going to give your business a line of credit. They're going to be like, all right, you could very easily just be like, nah, I'm not doing this. And, and that's it, right? What you got to do then is, is put your name and put your credibility, put your, your future on the line and then they might give you money. But getting big loans is really difficult to do. That's why angel investing, venture capital, friends and family investing is so you know, critical. For me, my fitness center, the way that we sort of raise money, we got friends and family investors and then we took this money to a bank and said, hey, will you give us more money based on this collateral and it was cash. And so they give you a little more and then you do some other stuff and then you get credit cards. By the time I filed bankruptcy, I, like I said, had $500,000 in debt 
that I was personally responsible for. My business partner, Linda, she was personally responsible for it as well. But I had started taking money off of my credit cards in order to pay my staff and put food, food in, in, on the table. That was the point at which I was driving a beer cart and then more legal fighting happened and it was just like, okay, it is time to give this up. And it was the hardest decision because deciding to pack it up and to not pursue your dream or your vision is really challenging. And for me, it was even more daunting because I never had a plan B. I didn't think, okay, if this doesn't work out, I'm gonna start making YouTube videos, or I'm gonna start an image consulting, it just doesn't work that way, or at least it doesn't for me. So you've gotta decide for yourself. Unfortunately, there is no, if this happens, then stop, or if this happens, then stop because you hear about a lot of these success stories that they just keep going and eventually something works. For me, it just, it, it wasn't fun, it was brutal, I was broke, there was like no like putting gas in my car really, and it, it was the end. And so by the time I realized that it was time to, time to shut that down, it was not by choice, it was just I needed to face reality. And I think for you being a business owner or starting a business, you need to face reality. If it's not growing as fast as you'd like, then you know, you've got to decide whether or not that's something that needs to be stopped. If it's not doing well and things are just not working and no matter what you try, no matter how much gas you pour on that fire, if it's not working, you've got to be honest with yourself because they say that uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. I don't know if this applies here, but for me it definitely does in, in so many, so many situations. But for you, you've got to decide and hopefully you can see something or learn something and, and that's the other thing. Even if your business fails, because the first time something fails, it sucks super bad. The second time it fails, it sucks super bad. But with each sucking failure, it sucks a little bit less and you get less scared to try. And the only time you truly fail is when you just give up, right? And so for me, I was broke as hell, but I just, I just didn't give up. Andre Von Art, sorry for butchering your name, brother, says, business question, choosing between selling a product or providing a service. What do you want to do? <laughs> it's really up to you. I will give you a few pros and cons. So selling a product, you can have it manufactured, you can scale that. Selling a service, this is a lot more challenging to scale. There's somebody that I, I recently talked to, a friend of mine, Alan Roberts, he owns Every Damn Day Fitness, right? He is a loud mouth, he curses all the time. But over the course of the past few years, I've gotten to know him. Our relationship started because he was trashing me and I reached out and said, hey, why don't you come and meet us? And, and then if you still don't like us, cool, but just come and meet us before you keep talking mad trash about us. Anyway, at the time that he came down, he didn't really have a business. He didn't have, he didn't have a business at all. He just had a YouTube channel. And over the course of the past like two years, he's grown to I think like 100,000 subscribers. He has different products. He's got sort of workouts and diets, but the main core of his business is personal one-on-one -on -one coaching. And it is hard. With a service, you're limited to the amount of hours in the day, the amount of things that you can personally do. Until you figure out a way to scale that, i.e add team members or figure out a way to convert it into like something that's more digital or a product, it's gonna be tough to really scale it. But if that's what you wanna do, I've got another friend, Tanner Guzzi. He has a, a business where he, does, he sells a service, where these guys he connects with and he goes in and analyzes their wardrobe, he does some of it online, but then he actually has sessions. They'll fly to him or he flies to them and he's in it, he's, he's doing it and he's going in and performing the service. The problem with this is that it takes time. It takes a lot of time. You're not gonna be making money as you, or when you sleep, as they say. Products are different, that's a different animal. Once you find a mechanism or a product that people wanna buy, you can scale that as long as you figure out how to get more people that are interested in your product in order to buy that product. So for me, I have tried services. I used to be a personal trainer. The only way that I would make money is if I was actually training somebody. And I only had, you know, so many hours in a day. And so I was limited into, in, in terms of how much money I could earn. But you know, given that same scenario, personal trainer, if you had an e-product or, or, or an exercise ball or, or bands or you were selling some type of journal, 
you can sell it to other people that are, are interested in exercise and as long as you figuring, figure out the marketing component, you can sell as many as you want. You can make money when you sleep. While you're sleeping, people will buy or could potentially buy your product and that is really truly, I think, honestly the dream. You can be sitting on the beach as they say. A lot of these get rich quick guys that are telling you how you can make a zillion dollars and, and do it all from the beach sipping Mai Tais with spicy senoritas. That's what they're doing. They're talking about products and e-products and things that you can, you can sell but you don't actually have to be there. You can do the work one time and then just figure out how to actually generate sales and get people that are interested in that product to buy it. It's much more scalable. You can make more money doing that in my opinion but ultimately you've got to decide what you like. If you don't like doing that and you want to provide some type of service or that's what you're passionate about, then maybe you need to think about how to scale that. Get people under you, get teammates, you know, you sort of be the boss and then you have people underneath you. There are ways to scale it. So don't think for a second you can't but it takes more work in order to do that in my opinion but they're both challenging, right? Any business you want to be successful and scale is going to take, take work, it's going to be challenging, you're going to have hurdles and some things are better with one than others and others are better than others and so you just got to decide what's right for you. Sorry if that was all over the place but that is my humble opinion. The last question I saved for last because it's like, it's a really long question, there are a lot of parts to it. I'm going to try and skim it. It's from our friend Colin. He and his girlfriend are moving to Las Vegas from Missouri for a big business opportunity. From what I gather from this, this, um, this email, he basically got connected with some people via the Men Influential Conference and they are going to start a business teaching people how to gamble in Vegas. They're going to have a location in one of the big, apparently a fashion show mall, which I don't know what that is. The rent is $150,000 per month and their whole thing is that they're going to teach people how to gamble responsibly at actual casino tables. There are also opportunities, there's been some interest from the casinos about putting pop-up locations in their hotel, so there's a lot of potential. They want Colin to move to the Las Vegas Strip or, or Las Vegas in order to help with social media and marketing. His question is, is it possible, and I'm sorry I keep stopping, I'm just trying to read this and get my brain around it. A very small team, there are a few people that are going to be involved. Um, can they manage such a large opportunity all at once? Well, it all depends on, on the opportunity and it depends on how big you try to make this all at once. Uh, anyway, he's just asking, if there are any red flags or anything that I, I would advise him based on an inexperienced team. So the first thing I would say is you got to make sure you've got people that understand this industry really well. It sounds like, I don't know man, $150,000 a month is a lot of money and that is a lot of customer. I, mean, I can't imagine how many people you need in order to, I mean, I, I don't know man, that just seems like, that's the thing that scares me because nothing takes the fun out of a business like rent or having a big monthly expense. And so $150,000, I know that rent is expensive in Vegas, I don't know exactly how much each client is going to be paying, I don't know sort of the structure, I don't know how you're going to be able to, back to scaling, right? How many people you need teaching people gambling on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis, an annual basis in order to cover a, you know, like almost two million dollar a month rent. Like that's crazy. And then you've got partners. And so you then have to do over two million dollars before you even just like, like just to break even. This doesn't include the other operating costs associated with, with, with running a business. And so, me, I hear this and I know that the idea is, oh, if you're in a really popular location, a lot of people walking away around, you're going to just, you're, you're not going to have to market or advertise as much as, you know, as much as you would and so that's what you're kind of paying for. I don't necessarily buy that. I think you still have to sell it. You still are going to need people talking about it. In terms of the pop-up locations in the casinos, I think that's a better sort of strategy in my opinion. I would probably, if it were me, I would go to these casinos and say, you know, hey, we want to lease, you know, a shop because every casino pretty much has like space or a shop 
that that you would, you know that's up for lease. Now, granted, they're still crazy expensive in terms of of rent, but I would prove the model on a smaller scale before you do it like big mainstream. Honestly, that's what I would do. I would go to one casino and possibly a smaller casino not like the Bellagio or one of these like grand amazing like casinos because who knows if they're even going to be interested at the <laughs> I almost said it again and so I would probably go and start it on a smaller scale your overhead is going to be less and you're going to see are people interested do you even know that it's a service that people will buy do people want to go to Vegas and pay for this service and then how much will they pay for this service and then are you legally at all responsible or if they lose all their money are they going to come back to you and be like, yo, you told me how to play. You told me this. You, you definitely are going to need to have a lot of insurance and a lot of waivers, I would imagine. And that's expensive. Insurance is, is crazy expensive. And so your liability insurance is also going to be high, I would imagine. And so doing it in the mall first and starting there on this huge opportunity, I think would probably make me really scared. I, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> um, I, would, I would try and figure out, can I figure out a way to do it on a smaller scale? And then if it works, maybe you do other pop-up shops. And maybe that's the model. Maybe you have just like a kiosk in a mall where you've got a lot of foot traffic, a lot of people, and you say, and it's less rent, obviously. It's not like a big space. It's a kiosk saying, hey, you know, here, or hire people to go outside casinos and hand out flyers. Right? And just say, hey, if you want to learn how to gamble responsibly, you know, go and check out our, our school wherever. Or get a space off the strip or close to the strip. I think there are ways to do it that you're not risking so much. Because $150,000 a month, holy moly, that's a, <laughs> that's a lot of money. And so to sign that lease, man, I would, I would, I would wet my pants. I, I wouldn't do it. But that being said, it's an opportunity that you think is exciting. It's an opportunity that you are passionate about. You gotta roll the dice, man. You gotta try it, you gotta figure out a way. You just need to make sure that you don't have like delusions of grandeur in the beginning thinking, oh, everybody's gonna come, we're gonna make $5 million, because it, it's not gonna be best case scenario, I can promise you that. It's probably not gonna be worst case scenario, but it's going to be somewhere in between. And is that somewhere in between going to earn more than $2 million a year to pay your rent? I don't know. <laughs> I need you to sign a, a release for me to give you any more information. But if you're passionate, you got to roll the dice. You got to try, man, because nothing great was ever accomplished because it was easy. There is risk with everything. You just got to make sure that you limit your risk as much as possible. But can a team, a small team, an experienced team, handle something this big, I would say somebody's got to have experience because figuring out on the job with $150,000 breathing down your neck every month is not going to be fun. And there's nothing that takes, like I said, the fun out of a business like having overhead and expenses that you've got to pay. And that's before you eat. So my two cents. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a gambler, but you may be and have a bigger appetite. Gentlemen, that's it. Thank you so much for this vlog. Thank you so much for helping T. Shanley reach 40,000 subs. If you like this video, drop us one of these. And down in the comments, if you've got a business-related question, start it with business question. Ask your question, and next week we'll get to more of your amazing, incredible questions. But at the almost end of the day, see, I'm, I'm still breaking myself, but, I'm, but it's working, I think, a little bit. I almost said it like four times in this vlog. We love you more than our double monk strap shoes.